Hello everyone, this is Stephen McIver, and today I'm going to give you a short sermon called Sin, Man's Greatest Threat. So what is sin? It's simply disobeying God. It's oftentimes living as if we are God. Jesus in Mark 7.20 mentions a list of unclean things from the heart. This list of things being sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. This is a long list of unclean things that come from our heart. Where did it come from? Where did sin come from? In Ezekiel 28, we have the story of Satan being cast out of heaven. And in this verse, we're told this is the king of Tyre, but it appears that the king of Tyre has been possessed by Satan. And we learn that uh, Satan wanted to be like God, and God cast him out of heaven as a result. And God, and Satan then wanted to ruin God's latest creation, he wanted to ruin humanity. God creates Adam and Eve and gives them one rule in the Garden of Eden. Do not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And quickly in Genesis 3, Satan tempts Eve to eat from the tree. And she even shares with Adam. As a result, sin enters our hearts, creating a problem in every human being thereafter. Does God view all sin exactly the same? The simple answer is no. In the Old Testament, there are many different sacrifices to atone for varying levels of sin. And then we learn that things like murder and adultery, uh, there's not a sacrifice to atone for them. Uh, they resulted in the death penalty. God gave the law not to help people be perfect, but to instead see that they needed God's mercy. God sent the prophets to the nation of Israel to tell them to repent and warn them that they'd be going into exile if they didn't. And the people would have good kings that would help them to repent and follow God. And then they would have bad kings that swayed them completely the other direction and led them into worship of other gods. And eventually, God couldn't stand it, wouldn't listen to the people or the prophets, and he punished them. He sent them to exile. In the New Testament, in 1 Corinthians 5.5, 5, this is a verse dealing with the sin of incest. Hand this man over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, so that his spirit may be saved on the day of the Lord. And so God is sovereign, and he can use all things for good. So something is as evil as Satan, and God can use in order to help people to repent, for people to finally see the need for God's mercy. And we're told that people who cannot forgive, in turn, will not receive forgiveness. God is very, very merciful. He forgives over and over and over again. And so when other people can't when people can't forgive other people, and then God just won't forgive forgive them. And we're told blasphemy against the Holy Spirit cannot be forgiven. And continually ignoring the voice of the Holy Spirit and uh, just turning the other way. And in Acts, by God, some are rebuked, some are blinded, some are killed. So varying levels of punishment there. Can we get rid of sin on our own? Simply doing good things is not the answer. In Isaiah 64, we learn that all of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf, and like the wind, our sins sweep us away. We can do lots of good things in this world. We can make lots of donations, but none of it's enough to get rid of our sin problem. In Hosea, in this very graphic detail where, uh, where Hosea is told to marry a prostitute, this is an analogy for how God feels when we are unrepentant sinners. In Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So, here's the answer. Salvation received through faith in the death and resurrection of Jesus. Jesus, who is God who came to earth as a humble little child, and grew up in the shell of humanity, and was, was tempted to sin just like we do, that Jesus was perfect and he became the perfect sacrifice to atone for our sins in the past and now and in the future. John 14, 6, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. In John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Salvation places you and God in the new covenant. Jesus' blood washes away all sin, 
and you are justified, seen as righteous before God. And finally, in Ezekiel 11, 19, we're told, I will give them an undivided heart and put a new spirit in them. I will remove from them the heart of stone, their unclean heart, and give them a heart of flesh, a heart that works properly. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. God bless. See you next time.